Hello everyone, this is Unit 1, Lesson 7, Lesson Target. I can determine if the product and or sum of rational and irrational numbers are rational or irrational by using various mathematical practices. Alright, let's get right to it and go to that entrance slip. So, which expression results in a rational number? Remember, we said rational numbers were whole numbers, fractions, anything anything that uh, is a decimal that ends is a like a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal where we have 1.2, 1.3, something like that. So if you could find a number on the number line, it is rational. All right, and what we do here is just use our calculator all right so we're going to put we're going to use the calculator and we're going to discuss if we know beforehand um if a with if two numbers when you add them together results in that rational number so we have l here um and l is the square root of two so i'm going to put that down right now as the square root of two and m, we're going to add m, and we're going to put 3 square root of 3. All right, so I know that the square root of 2, if I put it into the calculator, and I'm just going to get the calculator up right now and clear it, clear it. So I already know that the square root of 2 is irrational. All right. And I know that 3 plus 3 square root of 3 is irrational. Two irrational numbers, when you add them together, should result in an irrational sum. All right? So I know I don't even really have to use the calculator for this, but let's just check it out. We have square root of 2 plus 3 square root of 3 and I'm gonna press that to the right there and I knew that that was definitely going to be irrational which expression results in a rational number it is not a so I put down that irrational plus another irrational is definitely irrational let's go to B and let's see if B is any better so it's M plus N so what we're going to write down right now is m. So we're going to have 3 square root of 3, which is irrational, plus n, which is square root of 16. Square root of 16 is a perfect square, so that's rational. So I know before I go ahead and put this in the calculator this should be irrational because an irrational number 3 square root of 3 and I'm, don't forget to press that right button to get it away from the rat underneath the radical plus square root of 16 which is a perfect square which is 4 it's still irrational so that makes it easy so a and so we're talking about a and b both being irrational so we're going to cross those off right now all right so we have a and b gone let's go over to n plus p so n we're going to look at is square root of 16. p is the square root of 9. So I know that this is rational plus rational. So it's 4 plus 3. And that equals 7. And that is my answer right there. C is my answer. Let's just check P out right now um, for choice D. This is square root of 9, which is rational plus L, which is square root of 2, which is irrational. Do you see what I'm saying? This is rational, plus an irrational, 
should be irrational automatically. All right, so D is out, C is your answer, and that's basically it. Okay, so we are on lesson seven, and we are talking about the difference. One of the do nows right now is what is the difference between a rational number and an irrational number? And for this question, we are going to make a list of of differences and we're going to list them both left we put rational and right we're going to put ration with irrational so rational let's take uh, rational numbers because a lot of numbers are rational and it's very easy to understand what a rational number is so first we're going to put natural numbers all right, so we're going to put natural numbers down. And what are natural numbers? They're counting numbers. All right, so counting numbers like 1, 2, 3, those are natural numbers. And we are going to put that first. Next thing we're going to put is whole numbers and whole numbers are numbers you know that are an integer all right and without a fraction like one half is not a whole number one is a whole number so the next thing we're going to put we're going to put integers all right, and I just put down a couple of examples. Whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Integers include all of the whole numbers plus the negatives. All right, just so you know. So, so far we have rational natural numbers, counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0 is not a counting number because you can't count it. Whole numbers includes all of the positive and zero and then integers all negative and whole numbers included along with zero okay so now we're going to add something else to this list repeating decimals and what is a repeating decimal well a repeating decimal is something like um 1.33333 and it continues on forever and sometimes we write that um where we have a line on top like this, 1.3, and a line on top. All right, repeating decimals. Uh, also, you can have two thirds, 0 0.6 with a line on top. All right, it goes on forever repeating decimals and another type of decimal is terminating decimal terminating decimal um, could be something like 0 0.5 terminating decimal or 0 0.25 Determining decimals are decimals that end. Repeating decimals don't end, but they go on forever in the same manner with a pattern of some sort. Like could be 1.23232323. That is a repeating decimal. So all fractions, fractions. So anything that you have as far as one half one-third, two over seven, all fractions, Any t anything that could be found on a number line is basically a fraction that those numbers, all the fractions are rational numbers.
we're talking about one more thing. We're talking about perfect squares. So a perfect square is sometimes uh, like you should know all of your perfect squares or, you know, and if you don't know them, just make sure that you have that calculator there. Square root of 16 is 4. That's a perfect square. Square root of 25 is 5. That is a perfect square. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 144. All perfect squares. Alright. And if you don't know, square root of 144, we're going to move it over here. And square root of 144. Enter. 12. Alright. All perfect squares come out to be whole numbers. And and that's basically it. So that's a lot of, for to remember for the rational. Now let's talk about irrational. The most famous irrational number is pi. So if we kind of go on to the calculator here and we are going to grab pi and pi is right here so we have second function pi and then we press enter take a look at what it is so we're going to kind of like going to put that on there equals 3.14159264 and then dot 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 there is no repeating pattern here it goes on forever does not stop you can't plot pi on a number line this is an irrational number so non-terminating non-repeating decimals are it's exactly like what pi is right here is what you see all right um the decimal will, will could be like two, two three, six, nine, four, two, one, with no uh, pattern at all. It's not like a repeating decimal, not a terminating decimal. It doesn't. It it does not make any kind of sense. That number you can't find it on a number line. Non-terminating and non-repeating decimals are irrational. One last thing about um irrational numbers non-perfect squares you know that from the other side we're talking about right here the perfect squares are square root of 16 square root of 25 square root of 100 square root of 81 square root of 144 square root of 400 those are perfect squares when you take the square root of those numbers it comes out to be a um, whole number a an, an integer so non-perfect square is much different if you have say the square root of 10 and the square root of 10 take a look at what if I put that into my calculator square root of 10 I already know it's a non-perfect square but if you press enter you see exactly what you have you get a non-terminating non-repeating decimal so all non-perfect squares would be um, the answers to non-perfect squares, as soon as you see a non-perfect square, you get a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal, and those numbers are irrational. So if we're talking about square root of 10, square root of 15, non-perfect square, square root of 101, non-perfect square. So all of those numbers, pi included, irrational numbers. So this is the difference between irrational and rational right side by side. So w when they ask you to identify what a, ra a, a rational number and irrational number, it becomes a little bit easy because you're looking at this negative 2 right here and you know that you're going you're gonna to have your list right next to you and you're going to go, all right, so I have an integer here. An integer is rational right can I find that I usually ask myself it's easier 
can I find that number on a number line? And yes, I can. This, this negative 2 is rational because it's an integer. And 17, another number you could find. It's a whole number. It's an integer. This is rational. Um, 2 pi, 2 times pi, anything with pi in it is irrational. It is a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So we're talking about an irrational number, and I'm going to just put IRR for that. 2.3, what is that? If you said rational, that is correct. It's rational. Why is it rational now? So it's not enough just to put that something is rational, you have to know exactly why. 2.3 is a terminating decimal, and that is rational. What about square root of 3? Think about what you think it is. Is it rational or irrational? If you said irrational, you are correct. And the reason why that is irrational, think about what an irrational number is. That is a non-perfect square. If you put square root of 3 into your calculator, and we'll bring it up again, square root of 3 in the calculator you have second function, square root 3, and you have a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal because that is a non-perfect square. What about the square root of 25? Square root of 25 is a perfect square, so that is rational. Remember I told you that all fractions, all fractions are rational, all right? With a number, with a whole number on the bottom uh, as a numerator and a whole number as a denominator. So we have a rational number. Okay, so here is a tricky one. And it says 3 times pi. You know that the top part of this the numerator is irrational. Anything with pi in it is irrational, but the bottom is rational. So when you divide these two, an irrational and, ir and rational number, we are going to get what? Irrational number. So remember, if you have an irrational divided by a rational, and you put that into your calculator, that is going to result in a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. And zero is rational. All right. And if you ever get confused, you have this list here, right? Zero is part of the whole number system, and it, a whole number is rational. And that's basically it. So hopefully you are able to do those with me and understand exactly what is going on with that. So a set of numbers is closed under an operation when the operation is performed on any two numbers in the set that results in a number that is also in that set. So it's closed. For example, if your set of integers is closed under addition, subtraction, and multiplication, that means that if a and b are two integers, then a plus b, a minus b, and a times b are also integers. And I'll give you some examples that we are that we have on the bottom that we can go over in yellow here and in red. So we're looking over here. So if you have an integer plus an integer, like say like five plus three it is definitely going to equal an integer, which is 15. You could take any two numbers that are integers, even if you have negative numbers, it is still going to give you another integer when you add that together. And the same thing, when you, when you subtract an integer from an integer, you will get an integer as an answer. And the same thing when you are multiplying two integers. So five plus three is closed under addition, because it equals 15, which is also an integer in the set. 5 minus 3 is closed under subtraction because it equals 2, which is an integer in the set. And 5 times 3 is closed under multiplication because it equals 15, which is an integer in the set. So all of those are closed. So we're going to go on to this and we'll see exactly what um, we'll do a couple together and then you can take a couple pause the video and try some on your own so I wanted to take you through a couple of uh, 
couple of examples, a couple more examples. And set of numbers is closed under operation, like we said on the page before, when the operation performed on any two numbers in the set results in a number that is also in the set. So addition. So we're going to talk about addition right here. And we're going to take two numbers. We're going to say, all right, let's take negative three and negative seven. When you when you add negative three and negative seven, you get a negative ten. So negative ten is closed, means it's closed, and only because this right here is an integer plus another integer and 10 is an integer so it's you're you're adding two negative numbers and you're getting it you're getting that negative two integers and you're getting another integer in return so that means it's closed so take a look at subtraction you have a double negative right so you have this double negative so when we rewrite this this is negative 3 plus a negative 7 Right? So, whoops, sorry. It's not negative 7. It's negative 3. And this, these two, the two negatives together make a positive. So that is negative 3 plus 7. So negative 3 plus 7 is 4. And just take a look. This is closed again on the subtraction because integer plus an integer gives you another integer all right it's closed because it's giving you another integer so again now we're going to take a look at multiplication here integer times an integer will give you 21 and that's an integer so this is closed under multiplication but just take a look at what division has to offer so we have an integer divided by another integer that does not equal an integer it equals a fraction And that fraction is not an integer. All right. And that means it is not closed. So this is not closed. So I just wanted to give you one example of... of an operation that is not closed you can have an integer divided by another integer and it's not your your result would be a fraction so that's it all right so now we have a, a huge table here and before we get into the table we're just going to review what it is that we have to do what we want you to do is put 12 plus 5 put your answer here tell if it's rational or irrational we'll do a couple with you and then you could take the rest on your own remember we are going to talk about closed and and not closed so uh but the main thing here is that the sum and the product the sum and the product and just say if it's rational or irrational so 12 plus 5 is obviously 17 you could put 17 right here and that is definitely rational rational because why whole number you could say whole number integer all right so now we're going to do negative four plus nine is five rational
And yes, it is rational and an integer. So we have two fractions. When you add them together, go ahead, put, and by the way, when you get your calculator up and you're adding these together, remember you do alpha X and you have that, you have the fraction symbol come up or alpha Y and you could, you have this little shortcut right here, um, come up and then you can press one and put the fraction in that way. So it's four over five and then click to the right and then plus and then alpha X again and you go two over three. Remember all fractions are rational so if you add two rational numbers together you get a fraction. So this is 22 over 15 and we are going to put that right here and 22 over 15 is rational. And you can put fraction, even though, all right, so, so if you press this math button right here, all right, you'll see that one fraction comes up and then two decimal. I'm going to go down to decimal and I'm going to take my answer and, and then convert it into a decimal using the calculator. You notice it says 1.466666. Well, that's because the, the uh, and then at the end there, it's the seven. That's because that calculator does not have enough space to go all the way. And it would be 66666. This is a repeating decimal and repeating decimals are rational. You could say it's a fraction or repeating decimal. All right, repeating decimal. All right, see if you could do the rest of them on your own um, and just exactly the way we've been doing it right here. You could try them, press pause now. Okay, so hopefully you did have a chance to try them and I think that um, we left off right here. So 0 0.74 plus 2.1 is 2.84. Um, if we didn't, we maybe took these two fractions, 22 over 15. It's rational. It's a fraction. It's a repeating decimal. Um, this is rational terminating decimal, meaning that the decimal st ends, stops 2.84 and is no more. Um, 8 times 3, 3 times 8, 24 is rational, it's, it's an integer. Negative 4 times 6, which I didn't realize that was multiplication, so I'm going to change that right now. Okay, so um, I didn't realize that was multiplication, so it's 24, it's rational, it's an integer. Um, negative 4 times 6 is negative 24, it's rational, it's an integer. Um, 3.1 times 0 0.6, 1.86, it's rational, it's a terminating decimal. Um, and 3 fourths times 5 over 4 uh, is 15 over, 15 over 28, and 15 over 28, 28 is rational, it's a fraction. Um, if you do end up putting 15 over 28 into your calculator, you'll get something like this. As long as like, you realize that every fraction is rational, you will be okay. So 15 over 28, then you press the math button and you're going to go down to two or press two and then press enter and convert that. Um, just take a look. If you have 0.535714 E five seven, and then it'll keep on going like that. One four two eight one five seven. So this is kind of like a, a one that looks irrational because it's not it's it's term it's non terminating non repeating, but it is not. It's a fraction, and you know fractions that no matter what that calculator says and what it looks like on the calculator because the calculator only has so much room um, to show you the numbers that is rational it's a fraction
So what I wanted to uh, talk about before we go on to the next page is that rational numbers are closed under addition and rational numbers are closed under multiplication. You can see it right now because integer plus integer will equal an integer. A fraction plus a fraction will equal another fraction. So a terminating decimal plus another terminating decimal, it'll be rational, and that's a terminating decimal. Rational numbers are closed under addition, and rational numbers are closed under multiplication. And again, so please copy that. Make sure that you understand that that is the main focus of this page to show you that rational plus rational equals rational and rational times rational equals rational. So it closed under those operations. All right, so um, here we go with a another another table, sums of rational and irrational numbers. This table shows several sums and products of rational numbers. So you have to complete the table just as if we, just like we did the table before this. Use your calculator, put your answer down, and if you think it's rational or irrational, and then think about why you feel it's rational or irrational. So we'll do the first one together. And we have one plus square root of five. And we're gonna press enter. And our answer is going to be a mess. So let's talk about what the answer is right here. This is three point two three six oh six seven nine dot 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 all right we're just going to do that and do you think that that is rational or irrational and if you said irrational you are correct all right so why though i mean yeah you know why it's irrational. You know that it is irrational, but why? All right, so let's go ahead and see. This is a non terminating, non repeating. decimal that's the reason why go ahead do the other three and then put your reasoning right next to it just like I did and then we'll talk about it when we come back press pause and try the problems now so these are the answers using my calculator that I did come up with um, I had four I had Square root of 2 plus 5 over 6 is 2.2475 dot dot dot. It's irrational, not terminating, not repeating decimal. 4 plus pi is 7.141592.65 dot dot dot. Irrational, same reason, non non terminating, not repeating decimal. And then negative 8 plus square root of 10, same thing, irrational, uh, non terminating, non repeating decimal. So from the table, uh, it, and this is more or less uh, an observation, not really a fast finisher. What do you notice about the sum of a rational and irrational number? So just take a look. I'm going to put it right above here. This is rational plus an irrational. What is that? What does that equal? It equals irrational. Let's just take this one. This is irrational plus a rational number. Remember, all fractions are rational. This is irrational. This is rational. Plus pi, which is irrational. That equals irrational. Right? So now this is rational. Plus an irrational. And that equals irrational. So what do you notice? So let's just go down and just take some notes here. And that's what we should notice. The sum of 
and please write this down, the sum of a rational and irrational number is irrational. So what we have found is simply this. We're going to put this into perspective. Rational plus irrational equals irrational. And irrational plus rational is obviously the same thing. Irrational because addition is commutative, but rational from the other page, rational plus rational equals rational. And that's the whole thing. The whole idea right there. All right, products now. We're going to move to multiplication, and we are going to do this. We'll do that first one together, and then we'll just go ahead and press pause and hopefully um, give you a chance to do it and come back with your answers. All right, so now the first one is 6 times square root of 12. Enter, and you have 20. So you're going to put your answer again, 20 point, or like right here, 20.7846. You don't have to write that much of it down. Zero, dot, dot, dot. And that is obviously irrational. But why? Irrational, because again, you have a non-terminating non-repeating decimal. Non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Go ahead, do the next three, and we'll come back and review. Press pause now. So just take a look at what we have here. Um, we have negative 2 times pi, and that is irrational because non-terminating, non-repeating. We have 2 over 5 times square root of 3 is irrational because it's not terminating, not repeating product. And then 0 times the square root of 6 is 0, and that is rational. So if we take a look at the fast finisher, which is really just an, an, an observation that you must, you must come to, using the results from this table, is the product of a rational and irrational number always irrational? And your answer has to be, no, it is not. And explain your reasoning. So we're going to go over here and now we're going to explain what the reasoning is. Do you see over here, this is a rational number times an irrational. This one he was came to an irrational result. This is a rational number, square um, negative 2, and times pi, which is irrational. And that product was irrational. This fraction is rational, like every fraction, and square root of 3 is a non-perfect square. That is irrational, so the result is irrational. But now we have a rational number of 0 times an irrational, a non-perfect square, and it becomes rational. And this is the star this is the part that you have to remember. That is it always. No, it is not. And that's the reason why. So we're going to highlight that right now and make sure that we understand that this is the key that we have to understand. This is the reason why. Um, we can't say that this is closed, all right? And so rational times irrational can sometimes equal rational. And it's not always that rational times irrational equals irrational. 
not always true. And that is your justification. Any time that you multiply by zero, um, that is going to come out to be a rational product. All right. So let's talk about putting everything together and seeing if see if you could do it. And just remember, um, when you put your answer down, put down uh, in the right column. Put down whether or not you think it's rational and why. Okay. Press pause and try these problems now. Just making sure that you uh, know how to put this in the first, the first uh, question there. Three, and then you press second function, and then square root, and then two. All right. So it kind of looks like exactly what they're giving you there, plus square root two. All right. So you put the whole number in press second function then you go to square root and you press enter and you get 11 point this is 11 point uh, three one three seven zero eight and then dot 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 all right whatever you think it is that obviously is irrational And it is non terminating. Non repeating. Decimal. All right. And we're going to press pause again. I just wanted to make sure that you, underst you understood how to put that into the calculator, get the answer out. All right. Press pause now, and we'll come back with all of the answers and go over them. Okay. Here are your answers. You have square root of 12 um, plus square root of 27 is 66025. It's irrational, non terminating, non repeating. Square root of 7 plus pi is 5.87734. Uh, 5 it's irrational, non terminating, non repeating. Negative pi plus pi equals 0. That's That one is rational. Rational is an integer. So, and it, zero is an integer, so that's why it's rational. Pi times square root of seven is 8.31187, dot, dot, dot. Irrational, not terminating, not repeating. Square root of 10 is irrational with the square root of five times the square root of two. Putting that in your calculator, non-perfect square. Um, and the non-perfect square will result in a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. If you put it in your calculator, press enter. 4 pi times square root of 3 is 21.76559. Irrational, non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. And square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. So it's rational, it's perfect square. So in the fast finisher, which is really um, necessary, Using the results from the table, do you think this set of irrational numbers is closed under addition, under multiplication? Explain your reasoning. So let's talk about the addition. All right. And we're going to go over to the addition. And this is an irrational number. Plus another irrational number. All right. That equals irrational. Okay. So now we have irrational plus irrational equals irrational. Okay, so far so good. Uh, irrational plus irrational equals irrational. This is irrational plus irrational equals rational. 
Yeah, so um, as you saw right here, um, that this this is the part that is that that's the part that is irrational plus another irrational and that creates a rational number so you know that now you have this that you're going to highlight and this is the part that will say all right it is not closed all right closed means every instance that addition now is not it doesn't happen all the time so addition of a set of irrational let's we're talking about irrational plus irrational is not closed All right and you could just see right there addition is not closed right in that highlight that's where that instance it is definitely an irrational plus an irrational results in a rational number so please write that down because that is uh, the whole idea of doing this table and completing the table is to actually get to this right here and the set of irrational numbers is not closed under addition because of that one instance of irrational plus an irrational zero uh, negative pi plus a pi is equal to zero and you could do that with any number negative three plus three um uh, i'm sorry uh, it could have been so square root of seven plus a negative square root of seven or a negative square root of seven plus square root of seven would be equal to zero and that would be a rational number so let's go over to the rest of them and talk about multiplication so we have right here this is irrational times irrational and that equals irrational so so far it's closed irrational times irrational equals an irrational answer so so far it's closed irrational times irrational equals irrational so far it's closed and this is irrational times irrational but look what happens this is rational that answer so the set of irrational numbers is not closed under multiplication and just make sure that you are understanding that these two statements right here um, are the results of this table all right and just I'm gonna highlight that last one and that is the one that basically going to highlight because that is the example where it doesn't work and then that's what makes it not closed all right so go ahead and see if you could answer this question it says mid-level assessment but we are almost finished with this lesson so it's not really a mid left mid lesson but this is a region's question so which statement is not always true and this is the reason why you have to you have to know all of those statements that we we, we kind of put together um, in this lesson the sum of two rational numbers is rational the product of two irrational numbers is rational the sum of a rational number and an irrational number is irrational and or is it the product of a non-zero number and an irrational number is irrational go through each one you look back at your notes see if you can answer it press pause and try this problem now so if you picked B that is the answer let's explain the sum of two rational numbers rational plus rational equals rational we went over that it's 5 plus 7 equals 12 um, any two numbers could be negative could be any, uh, two fractions 
you add two fractions together, you get a fraction, you know, you get a fraction of return. That's always true. Um, C, I'm going to skip to C, sum of rational number and an irrational number. I just made two numbers up, 5 plus radical 3, um, radical, square root of 3. Um, 5 is the rational and square root of 3 is the irrational and that is going to result as long as you're adding an irrational number to a rational it, the result will be ra irrational all the time the product of a non-zero number they made it they made it uh, a point to say that non-zero because if zero was in there that sometimes that would be not true as as, as well so you have two which is the rational number times the square root of three, and I'm just making up numbers, and that is always irrational. So the one that is not always true is the product of two irrational numbers, and they always ask this on the regions. Um, if they are going to ask this type of question, they always talk about this. Um, the irrational is like a square root of a non-perfect square, just any non-perfect square. And in this case, I put square root of, of 5 times the square root of 5 um, would be 5. All right. The product of two irrational numbers is rational when you take the square root of a number times that square root of a number, a non-perfect square, and you get the perfect square. You get the, uh, the whole number in result and it's a rational number so b is your answer and that is a tricky um regions problem all right so uh critical thinking question that is designed to make you think is the set of irrational numbers closed under division if not find a counter example so in other words are you going to say that every time uh, when you divide an irrational and irrational and irrational, uh, it will result in irrational? And then if you think that it's not, find a counterexample. So we're going to think about it, press pause, and try to think of a problem that will um, say that it is not closed. Okay, press pause and we'll come back and discuss it now. So I'm here to tell you that this set of irrational numbers is not closed under division. So we are going to say that I'm going to give you that counter example right now. And I could just do what, because if we're going to say that the irrational number divided by an irrational number always has to be irrational then it's closed but we're here we're not gonna say that because it is not true can you think of a division problem of an irrational and an irrational number that would result in a rational answer all right, let's go. So I'm going to give you an irrational number. So I'm going to give you an irrational number of square root of 5. And I'm going to divide that by the square root of 5. And that is another irrational number. And the answer is 1, which is rational. So that now this is rational. This was irrational. And this is irrational. And that's why it is not closed. I'll give you another one that is pretty faint, you know, popular pi divided by pi equals one. All right, and pi is irrational divided by another irrational, and one is rational. So it is not closed under division. Okay, so here's another regions question that I would like you to consider. And it says, Miss Fox asked our class, is the sum of 4.2 and square root of 2 rational or irrational? Pat answered that the sum would be irrational. State whether Pat is correct or incorrect. Justify your reasoning. Remember, you have your calculator to do this. Try to do this problem. Write down everything that you need to write down. 
And remember, you have to justify your reasoning. It's not enough to put rash if Pat is correct or not. Um, you have to justify that reasoning. Go ahead, try the problem, press pause now. Okay, hopefully you have your answer down. Pat is correct because the sum of a rational plus irrational number is irrational and this is the proof you have 4.2 plus square root of 2 you put that in the calculator you have 5.61421 dot 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 and you have a rational plus irrational equaling an irrational so this is your rational number plus an irrational number equals irrational pat is correct go ahead see if you could um answer this exit slip and we're going to give you a couple of seconds remember find your counter example to prove your answer is correct so you're looking for another this is another regions question which statement is not always true go ahead try the problem press pause now so that was easy the first one I did kind of all right so the product of two irrational numbers is irrational so we have an irrational number of square root of 10 and then we have another square root of 10 I just made the numbers up two irrational numbers you multiply together you get an well you get a rational number it's supposed to be irrational but that is rational so that one's correct the product of two rational numbers is rational so i'm going to do two times two is four that's good the sum of two rational numbers two plus four equals six that's always good and the sum of a rational number three plus square root of five is irrational and that is definitely irrational all right and that's my counter example to prove that it is correct all right that ends the lesson hopefully you did gain a lot from watching um and that's it thanks for watching see you next time